Hey, what's going on guys? It's Arctic. We're back for another video. Today we've got some great exciting news. There was recently a new update pushed to the game and now chapter two of the Mines of Moria raid is here to go. There's a character who is now farmable and they have finally, finally changed the power level according to stars, which I have been, you know, really, you know, complaining about a lot in my live streams. If you've been watching the live streams, I always complain and in arena i was like i don't know is this a six star is this a seven star i have no way to tell now it's a little bit easier and now the power level kind of um has a better idea of you know power of who's stronger than who because before i had like a four thousand dunhar and a four thousand um wubet and the four thousand dunhar had like fourteen thousand health and then the four thousand wubet had twenty three thousand health like nine thousand more health but their power level was the same reason being wubet was six stars dunhar was five uh, or yeah, no, four. Dunhar was four, Wubet was six. Even though my Dunhar was geared to eight, level 60, and my Wubet was geared to seven, level 50. So stars made a huge change in the stats, but the power wasn't changed with it. They have changed that though, which is amazing that they finally done that. So now we can go to the roster and we can see this change. So my Dunhar is now 4,522 and my Wubet is 5,642. And for those of you curious, about my elver here my elver here so the max elver here this is the biggest you can possibly get your elver here right now in the game uh considering there's no way to get the essences um other than from uh doing sam's adventure uh there's no other way to get them so this is as big as you can get your elver here currently in the game is level 60 seven stars all abilities level six at 12,219 power. So if I recall correctly, I believe I was around, what was I around 9K before or 8K? Something like that. Something somewhere around like eight, 9K. So we've jumped up to 12,000 power, which is amazing. So now we can better take a look when we're in the arena. Oh, we got some new, uh, new objectives to claim. Uh, we can take a better look in the arena at the... Um, the powers of the the opponents. So, for instance, if we look at our own, which is mostly five stars here, Elrond at five stars, most of his abilities are level five, his basics level four, and then his leader ability and his heal are level six. Um, he's at 7,128. So when we're looking at opponents now, we can kind of get a better idea of who's who's who when we're looking at, at the power level. Now this didn't change stats or anything. They're the, completely the same characters, just the power level shown represents better how strong they are. Like this Uglock right here, 11,000 power before he would have been you know, 8,000 or whatever. So now it better represents according to their star levels, even though it probably should show how many stars there are beneath so we don't have to play a guessing game. But we can see here, 8,322, 8,752. Now I know this one for sure has to be at least six stars. This is no, this is impossible that this is a five star. So I know this guy is at least six stars. This guy's probably six stars as well. And then the rest, it's kind of too hard to tell. They could be low level abilities, low level characters, not brought up to 60 yet at, at five, uh, at six stars. Uh, but definitely these higher 8Ks, uh, wherever they went, yeah, these 8Ks right here, especially especially this one, the 8-7. This one's definitely 6 for sure. Maybe could be 7. This one is probably a 6. But now it's easier to tell, so when we're looking at it, we can uh, better identify, you know, who's who. So it makes it a, a bit easier for us. Four raids. I actually haven't checked this yet, so this will be my first time checking to see. Uh, did they... Yeah, so Doom Doom unlocks in 18 hours, 59 minutes. So if we go here, um, we can now see the scoring rules for for uh, the chapter two. So we can look in here and we can see a cave troll draws near, muster your courage and fight to clear a path past the monstrous creature. Scoring rules, gain 100 points for every, per, uh, every percentage of health lost by the enemy cave troll. Gain 100 points for every critical hit. That is huge for every critical hit. Yo, maybe Lomian is good. That's some good points. But wow, look at these 15,000. That's insane. Okay. Okay, so gain 250 points for defeating an enemy orc. Okay, so those are the guys on the side. So we got like two orcs here. So you get 250 for beating these guys, right? 
every percentage of health. For every per percentage of health. So 100% health. So what is that? 10,000 points that you'll just get for decreasing his health. Gain 15,000 points for toppling the enemy cave troll. Gain 15,000 points when a toppled enemy cave troll loses all health. So how do you topple? How do you topple the cave troll? You know, like how in the Rancor raid, like you'll hit the switches and then like the door falls on the Rancor. Is that what we're talking about? Toppling here? Gain 15,000 points when a toppled enemy cave troll loses all health. So if you kill him while he's toppled, then he also loses, an, uh, he, uh, you gain an additional 15,000, huh? So we gotta figure out how to topple the enemy orcs. We can see all their abilities. I'll make a separate video and go in depth onto that. But now we can, you can go in here and you can take an in-depth look at what's going on there with uh, the Moria Cave Troll. And finally, Arwen is now farmable. We can now farm Arwen in chapter five of, uh, or not chapter five, in Shadow Hard 5-5, five five, you can farm Arwen. I've already gone ahead and farmed her. I got like 16 shards. I did my 25 and 50 refresh. But now Arwen is now farmable in Shadow Campaign 5-5 five five hard. So that is kind of, that's the last hard bit of the Shadow Campaign. So that is kind of high up there. Um, but you can farm Arwen now from Shadow Campaign Hard 5-5. Five, five five. So that is very important. So now you have there are enough characters available for you to unlock uh, Eladin, or uh, Elrond, I mean. So if we go to Elf here. To unlock Lord Elrond, you need five Elves at five stars. Now, the only five current options available to us now that Arwen's been released is Lomian, Arwen, Naramiri, Lilili, and Elra here. Now, I 100% recommend, if you are going for Elrond, definitely do Elver here, definitely do Naramiri. These two are going to be your easiest two characters to get those stars up. Easiest because guild campaign drops are incredible, and pretty much anyone in the guild campaign is going to be the fastest character to get to seven stars compared to anyone else. So Nar Naramiri and Elver here for sure, those two for sure. You want to do Arwen, she's part of the team, so now that you can farm Arwen, you want to get her, that puts you at three. Clearly, we have four or five here. That Those are only other two options. Lomian doesn't see that much action, um, but Lilili sees even less. So me personally, I'm farming my Lomian up to six stars right now. And now that uh, Arwen is available, I'm farming her up to six stars. I've already got my Elver here good to go. My Naramiri is good to go. I did prep Lilili and I got her to five stars for Lord Elrond or ready to go to five stars, but I never ended up using her for the event, even though I had spent all the gems uh, refreshing her node and all the campaign <clears throat> all the campaign energy farming her up to where she was able to be usable to unlock Lord Elrond, but I ended up getting picking up Arwen and Elodin, so that secured Elrond for me. So for anyone who is looking to get Elrond, the safest bet will be to farm Lilili to five stars. The most optimistic and efficient way to get Elrond is to assume Eladin will become farmable soon enough to where you can get Eladin to five stars before the Elrond event comes again, which we don't know when that could be. That could be months from now. That could be in two months. It could be in six months. We have no idea. We don't, we don't know when that, when his event is going to uh, arise again, but Lilili, even though I brought her Pretty much, brother, level 30, gear tier 5, all abilities level 3, ready to go to 5. I've never used her once. Probably complete waste of energy, of gems refreshing her node. If I could do it again, I would, In had I known that Eladin was coming to the game and I was going to get Arwen and Eladin both to 5 stars, and I really only needed Lomian and Naramiri and Elra here, I would have never spent any of my campaign energy, any of my gems, any of my time farming Lilili. So if you want to be optimistic and hope Eladin comes uh, before that, that would be the best choice. Safest bet is to get Lilili to five stars or start working her towards five stars until Eladin is confirmed. And then kind of try to calculate, do I have enough time to get Eladin to five before Elrond shows up? So now that Arwen's farmable, what does that mean for the other characters? So 
I made kind of a uh, rudimentary expectations for character releases here. So we'll be able to get a better idea in the future as more characters release. Um, but if we look here, we saw Arwen came out June 1st of 2023. She was released today, Thursday, August 17th, 2023. We didn't have a prediction for her. The days between her release date and her farmable date were 77 days. Now I've gone ahead and just thrown 77 days from each character's release date to a prediction date. And all of these land on either a Thursday, Monday, or Tuesday. So no weekends here. So it's all viable that these are accurate dates. Nothing will ever happen on the weekends because they don't do anything on the weekends over at CG. So if we look here, it is possible that Elodin could be farmable on August 31st. It is August 17th right now. So the 31st is, what is that, uh, two weeks from now? Two weeks from now, we could see Elodin become farmable. It's very likely, honestly. It's very likely we could see him become farmable on August 31st. Will it be the case? I'm not sure. But if you're wondering, if you've got those characters you've missed or characters that you want to get your stars with, I would just use these numbers as just kind of a rough idea, a very rough idea. We'll have a better estimate once Elodin comes out and then we get a, the days between for him. We can create a range for from this date to this date. Same thing when Legolas and Gimli. It gets more accurate as we get an idea of the days between the character releases. Now this is going to be completely different for legendaries such as Elrond. Um, Elrond's not going to be re-released in 77 days from his event going live. If it does go live, I'd be shocked if it went if his legendary event came to pass again. So 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 soon after they make Elodin and Arwen farmable, I'd be shocked because they would be like, is that even enough time for these people to get them to five stars? No, it, it's not. It's it's going to take a while for people to farm. Arwen and Elodin up to five stars without popping 25s and 50s to try to get them up there. So uh, hopefully they don't do that. To be fair to the free-to-play, because uh, free-to-play are going to miss it. If they if they release his event like first, second week of September again, even though it's good for whales, free-to-plays, and new players who completely miss the Arwen and Elodin events are going to have zero chance at getting Elrond on his second pass, if that's the case. So I hope... I hope just for the average player that they push it out a bit longer. That way people have the chance to get Arwen and Elodin up to five stars for his event. Now, if they decide to, you know, sleep on it and they don't, if they're not farming those characters, those elves right now to five stars, then that's on them. Because you really need to be prepping in advance for these things to occur. You can't just... Um, expect that they're going to announce it and they're going to give you enough time to farm it you got to kind of be preparing in advance otherwise it is going to cost you to pop refreshes on nodes and make purchases to you know complete that event on time for the rest of the characters legolas september 25th gimli october 2nd these days could be skewed because we had the elrond event happen um in between here so there is a, a bit of a gap so these could slide closer earlier in september earlier than what we're seeing here, just depending on, on what they do. I imagine there would be a gap insert for when they would run the Elrond event again, maybe. Unsure, but these are just the dates we're looking at. So September 25th for Legolas, October 2nd for Gimli, October 19th for Tebev, October 26th for Bekelu, and November 7th for Biffer. Completely, uh, specu complete speculation here. These aren't accurate at all. These are just rough estimations based on what we saw from Arwen. So take this with a grain of salt. This just is just to give you a rough idea on you know when to possibly anticipate these things to occur. So hopefully you guys found that helpful. Um, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section of this recent update. And uh, I'll be going live with chapter two. Um, when is that? That is in 18 hours. So I should be running unlocks in 18 hours. So there's gonna be a 24 hour break in between the chapters though, right? So this should be Saturday. I should be running chapter two, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. We did launch a little bit before the update was, see, it like ends in 17 hours. So I hope we didn't miss out. I hope we didn't miss out by a whole week, but I should be streaming this on, uh, on Saturday, I believe. <clears throat> on Saturday, I should be streaming chapter two. 
So look out for that. Hopefully we didn't mess it up. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.